the technologies that have made misinformation and disinformation so effective have also been used to great effect by the types of people and groups who attempted an insurrection against our country. But domestic violent extremists were around long before January 6th, and they'll continue to pose a significant threat long after we put that incident to rest. And that, my friends, is just the beginning of this broadcast. We titled, Chilling Warning, Congressman Declares the American People Should Be Scared to Death of This. You know what this is? I'm going to tell you in no uncertain terms exactly what this is. A movement of the intelligence community against those that you may not expect. When you don't give the definition precisely as to what a DVE is, domestic violent extremist, then who is put into that pot? Who is subject to this Biden administration intelligence arm now weaponized? against the American people, so much so that a congressman comes out and offers a dire warning to each and every one of us. We're going to get there very quickly as I walk through not only the Senate hearing you saw there, but also a separate hearing that occurred, all tying together into what is a mosaic that none of us could have expected to see. I want to first thank you for allowing me to fill in for Lisa Haven today. My name is Justice Knight, co-host at Restricted Republic. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope you will. Lisa will put a link just above me. If you haven't subscribed to all these social media platforms that we trade on and communicate with you, we certainly hope you will. Most importantly, with everything you're going to learn today, you'll understand why Lisa and I created Restricted Republic. We put together a very special offer for you by using discount code FREEDOM at monthly checkout, 24 months for $5 a month, plus 14 days free to get started. We hope you'll take us up on this offer because once you learn what I'm about to tell you, you'll understand the lights here can go out in a moment. And it's exactly what they're attempting to do on top of things so far worse. No commercials, no advertisers, no sponsors beholden to no one but our audience, RestrictedRepublic.com. Now let's get on with this broadcast. Now Lisa and I watch these things very closely. We're going to start with the annual threat assessment of the U.S. intelligence community published on April 9th of 2021 from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Now don't worry, we're not going to read all of this. I'm going to go to the lowlights of it. There's one section within the document called Global Terrorism. We'll dive into that a little bit. We see this lone actor threat manifested both within homegrown violent extremists who are inspired by Al-Qaeda and ISIS and within domestic violent extremists who commit terrorist acts for ideological goals stemming from domestic influences such as racial bias and anti-government sentiment. DVEs are also inspired by like-minded individuals and groups abroad. Also within this document, if that's not enough, and I'll get into the definition of this, racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists, again, we'll drill down. DVEs motivated by a range of ideologies that are not connected to or inspired by jihadi terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda or ISIS pose an elevated threat to the United States. This diverse set of extremists reflect an increasingly complex threat landscape, including, once again, racially or ethnically motivated threats and anti-government or anti-authority threats. So I want you to just consume that for a moment. We're only going to show two more slides on this very important document. Anti-government or anti-authority threats. In other words, if you disagree with the current administration, they will bundle you in to this new DVE threat assessment. But there's a secondary document coming out, allegedly Wednesday of this week, that the congressman warns what's about to happen. Devin Nunez warns about what's about to happen because they're reading the definitions within these documents. Let me show you one more just to to frame this in before I get into the testimony itself. That's right. The words from the people who are going to be responsible for what will be the largest dragnet of conservatives, Republicans, and potentially patriots this country has ever seen. Let's go back to the document now. Both these and other DVEs, such as anti-government and, again, anti-authority extremists, are motivated and inspired by a mix 
of ideological, socio-political, and personal grievances against their targets, which have increasingly included large public gatherings, houses of worship, law enforcement and government facilities at retail locations, lone actors who by definition are not likely to conspire with others regarding their plans are increasingly choosing soft, familiar targets for their attacks, limiting law enforcement opportunities for detection and disruption. Of these, violent extremists who espouse an often overlapping mix of white supremacist, neo-Nazi, and exclusionary cultural nationalist beliefs have the most persistent transnational connections via often loose online communities to like-minded individuals and groups in the West. It's a lot to consume, I understand that. But there they bundled multiple groups together. And they're starting now to shift towards this online threat assessment. I'm going to prove this out, exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to do it to provide you guidance as to what this administration is doing. Now, where does much of this come from? How is this stemming? How did the Biden administration create this? Let's start with Exhibit A, Avril Haines, who you're going to hear her testimony here shortly just to tie everything together. At one time, this was only a nomination. She is now the Director of National Intelligence going back in history. She served, as it says here in the article, former Obama official and John Brennan loyalist, now holds the Director of National Intelligence Post. Many of you who have listened to my broadcast know my position on John Brennan, and I know most of yours. But let's get into this testimony to frame in exactly what's about to occur. These groups seek to conduct attacks inside the United States, but sustained counterterrorism pressure has broadly degraded their capabilities. Domestically, lone actors and small cells with a broad range of ideological motivations pose a greater immediate threat. We see this threat manifest itself in individuals who are inspired by Al-Qaeda and ISIS, often called homegrown violent extremism, and those who commit terrorist acts for ideological goals stemming from other influences, such as racial bias and anti-governmental sentiment, which we refer to as domestic violent extremism, or DVE. And DVE is an increasingly complex threat that is growing in the United States. These extremists often see themselves as part of a broader global environment and movement. And in fact, a number of other countries are experiencing a rise in DVE. Now, you would have expected after hearing testimony like that, the Republicans would have fired back. But actually, you get quite the contrary. Let me present you Ben Sass, Republican senator out of Nebraska. Thank you uh, for being here as well. Um, the American people are blessed to have an IC that's as serious as ours is. We have a lot of uh, a gazillion patriots and some actual heroes in the community. And the five of you uh, care deeply about the mission and about leading those folks and celebrating them. So I just want to say, um, since most of our time in this committee is spent in an oversight capacity, which is in private, we don't get the chance to say in front of the American people enough. Thank you to the the entire intelligence community, and particularly the five of you who are leaders. Uh, Director Haynes, I also want to praise your statement. I think that your opening statement on behalf of the whole community today was incredibly strong. Some would consider that swooning. After you're hearing the words that were used, this is all leading to basically domestic surveillance. Those in the trial were William Burns, Christopher Ray, General Paul Nakasone, Scott Barrier, and of course, Avril Haines. Here on American Greatness, Biden intelligence community breaches authority to target the right. Instead of prioritizing resources to confront the menace posed by America's foreign adversaries, the IC is devoting most of its time to pursuing Americans on the political right. In her testimony, she said very clearly that domestic DVEs are a bigger threat than ISIS or Al-Qaeda to the Republic. But let's get back to the story. Newer socio-political developments, such as narratives of fraud in the recent general election, the emboldening impact of the violent breach of the U.S. Capitol, conditions related to the COVID-19 pandemic, and conspiracy theories promoting violence will almost certainly spur some DVEs to try to engage in violence this year, Haynes claimed in her March report. Domestic violent extremists are U.S.-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life and violation of the criminal laws of the United States or any state. 
Just, just break that down for a minute. Go through your belief system. Did you hear what she just listed there? Narratives of fraud in the recent general election, the emboldening impact of violent breaches at the U.S. Capitol, conditions related to COVID-19 pandemics, and conspiracy theories promoting violence. Think about your social media posts for a moment now. Think about your thought processes, and you fall into one of those categories. The warning is quickly starting to get into focus now, isn't it? I'm going to put it more into focus for you. So we have a headline come out of Fox News. U.S. Intel backpedals on Russian bounty story that Trump called a hoax. So U.S. Intel makes mistakes. And what if they make a mistake on you? What if they make a mistake concerning your family? What if they make a mistake concerning a post? Well, what would they do? Well, immediately thereafter, this story comes out another story. DOJ is reportedly investigating ex-Trump official who debunked a Russian collusion narrative. An opinion piece here coming out of the Washington Post, how Cash Patel rose from obscure Hill staffer to key operative in Trump's battle with the intelligence community. Who's the author of this story? Oh, David Ignatius, of course. Cash Patel, the former GOP congressional aide who uncovered the FBI surveillance abuses against Trump campaign, is a target of a federal leak investigation, according to reports from the Washington Post. David Ignatius, a columnist for the Post, reported Friday that two sources familiar with the probe say that Patel is being investigated for unauthorized disclosures of classified information. Don't be on the wrong side of this administration, especially when a story comes out that debunks what you once said was true. Trump said he wasn't comfortable with the intelligence, so he wasn't going to act on it. And now basically you're coming out and saying that he shouldn't have trusted the intelligence and he shouldn't have acted on it. So lo and behold, magically another story comes out, of course, involving Russian collusion. So we'll go back to David for a moment and see another story he posted on the Washington Post. Opinion, the truth behind the Hunter Biden non-scandal. What else is David posted on? There's David again, January 12th of 2017, the article that started it all in the Washington Post. Why did Obama dawdle on Russia's hacking? This leading, of course, to the Flynn investigation. Just want to frame in how the intelligence community can maneuver when they disagree with their political opponents. This is another set of government offices that are being politicized, which has horrific implications for the very freedoms that our constitution grants us. So we're gonna frame this in even further. Adam Schiff presses FBI on reviewing social media for future threats to the Capitol. And that title alone should have you concerned. It appears that probably some of the best intelligence prior to January 6 was open source, Schiff said. What is the Bureau's policy in terms of your ability to review social media when it's appropriate to do it, when it's not appropriate to do it? Do you have a clear policy on that? And are there legal constraints as well that preclude you from getting the intelligence that you need? Let's break down that statement. Is there any law standing in your way to violating the very privacy of the American public? You should have unfettered access to everything that they publish on social media or personal through private messaging or not. And if you don't have that access, Christopher Ray, can you please let us know so we can get that for you? You saw this coming. You had to have seen all this coming. I'm showing you how it is going into action. Now, how does Ray respond? Ray responded that the FBI does not simply patrol social media looking for problems. However, he said, the FBI does get tips from social media companies and members of the public. If we have the appropriate predication, we follow up on those, he said. Schiff then asked if in the absence of those tips, were there proactive efforts to determine the ongoing threat to the Capitol? Ray said, with specific events, there are certain algorithms and things we can run that are targeted towards a specific event and specific threat to a specific event. And in those situations, the FBI can be more proactive in running different kinds of queries and searches looking for indications of trouble, but not kind of in a more broad and open-ended way. So Schiff cuts in again, asking Ray whether there is an ongoing effort to identify additional threats to the Capitol building through social media, or if it is constrained by your ability to review social media, constrained by the privacy that we are each granted by our Constitution, is what Adam Schiff is questioning. The answer, 
Although Ray said the ongoing effort does not consist of just kind of randomly wandering through social media looking for problems, there's an avalanche of tips to come in from the public to both our field offices and National Threat Operations Center. There are all kinds of leads, assessments, preliminary inquiries, and full field investigations that flow out of those, all of which may be geared towards getting in front of and anticipating any kind of threat to the Capitol or to state capitals. The precogs arrive again, pre-crime. Pre-crime. This is happening in testimony right now. Right now. This administration is taking the intelligence agency and working it towards stopping one party. Just like they're doing with the Supreme Court, as we've discussed. But let's listen to more testimony. That facilitate either government or the private sector being able to get ahead of what we've seen with solar winds and with Microsoft. General Knoxon. Senator, I'm not seeking legal authorities either for NSA, for U.S. Cyber Command. Uh, my intent in my discussions has always been, though, is to uh, state that with an adversary that has increased its scope, scale, and sophistication, uh, we have to understand that there are blind spots in our nation today. And one of the blind spots that our adversaries are using is the fact that they are utilizing U.S. infrastructure and a means upon which we cannot surveil that, whether or not in the intelligence community or in the law enforcement community, to be able to uh, react quick enough to what they're doing. This is why we listen to hours and hours and hours of testimony, because you won't get this anywhere else but at Restricted Republic. This is how we frame all this. And you remember when we reported to you this FBI document, anti-government, identity-based, and fringe political conspiracy theories, very likely motivate some domestic extremists to commit criminal, sometimes violent activity. What do we warn you? This coming out of the FBI's Phoenix field office. What did we warn you would happen? They would take it a step further. They would attempt, as the general just stated, to get in front of this intelligence. They don't want to be embarrassed anymore. What else did we report to you? There was one agenda that they were going to use against everybody. Heinrich and Senate Democrats write to FBI and DHS requesting information on Q threat posed to America and abroad. That's right. So what's, how does that relate to this story? You're probably asking yourself. Well, as the article states here on Vice, we're about to find out how dangerous the FBI thinks QAnon really is. Are you scratching your head now? Just go ahead. Think about all your social media posts again. Just think about it for a moment. Because there's a report coming out on Wednesday. This report that Ray refers to said the report is close to being finalized. My understanding is my staff is working with yours and we should be able to get you a full, unclassified version of this report shortly. Wait now. What report? What information? When you're talking about social media, when you're talking about surveillance of the American public, when you've identified these DVEs, but yet at the same time, you're putting a report out on this QAnon. And now how is this all going to tie together, you might ask yourself. Well, sometimes you could tell by the reaction of those individuals who still are attempting to protect some amount of freedom we have. You could tell by the reaction, let's take here, of Devin Nunez, who says warns Intel chief against targeting Americans, particularly Republicans. He goes on to state, the Democrats see political benefits in characterizing wide swaths of American citizens, particularly Republicans and conservatives, as politically suspect, politically violent, and deserving of government surveillance, says Re Representative Devin Nunez of California. The panel's top Republican, however, I will remind those assembled here today that our intelligence community exists solely to counteract foreign threats. He added, as for the leaders of the intelligence community, I hope you plan on spending a reasonable amount of time in upcoming years on activities other than investigating conservatives and spying on Republican presidential campaigns. But that is not all. He states, Republicans feel like they've been targeted, and you hear that every single day when we're out with constituents, Mr. Nunez said at a hearing, and it's up to you, Director Haynes, really as the leader to ensure that this stops and it ends, but it seems like it's getting worse. Do you know who this gentleman is? Utah Representative Chris Stewart, taking a big leap of faith and declaring 
As she further described, talking about Haynes, the intelligence community's role is not involved in collecting and focused on domestic intelligence, but rather to provide analysis based on what has been collected by our domestic mission partners and to support them in their work and effect. Mr. Stewart replied, I have to tell you, Director, I just disagree with you. And I think the American people should be scared to death of this. That we have now crossed what I believe is a Rubicon where you're saying to the CIA, help us look at domestic terrorism. And we as Americans should be absolutely scared to death of this. They have now put into place an effort to turn all arms of the intelligence community against those that politically disagree with the administration. Yeah, there's bad people out there. Yes, the intelligence community was there to find them. But to take the broad brush they have now taken, the words that you have now heard, the documents you have now read, I hope you understand how big of a dragnet this will be when you have congressmen coming out warning that America should be afraid. And for this, we absolutely should be afraid if they did it to a seated U.S. president. What will they stop at in this newest, now coordinated effort to drag that an entire political belief? My friends, this is why we created the platform we did at Restricted Republic. Because there's more elements to the story that simply shouldn't be shared anywhere else but there. And we're going to get into those elements in great detail. Because you deserve to know even more of what's happening. The darker details. I hope you'll get over there right now. Discount code FREEDOM. 24 months for $5 a month, 14 days for free to check out the platform. See what an open discourse sounds like. No commercials, no sponsors, no interruptions beholden to no one but our audience. Those like-minded individuals who are now being isolated into the dark corners of a political spectrum by an administration run out of control. There is no other way to put it when they're going to take all intelligence communities and bind them together with one purpose and one agenda to silence any political dissent and or disagreement. Nothing more and nothing less. I can't thank you enough for allowing me to fill in for Lisa today. I hope if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you will. I hope you'll follow us on all the social media platforms that we present here. And I hope most importantly, you'll go to where unfiltered and uncensored news is provided to you. Because there is so much more to this story you need to know. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.